This is a Jackanory. <laughs> Spike go down the hall by Mythful Moth. Spike studied a grid of old rotten wooden boards standing amid a pitch of crimson weeds, stroking his scaly chin thoughtfully. A sign next to the boards read Old Abandoned Well, Caution, Falling Danger, Fall Should Not Play Near Well. Spike, of course, was not stupid. There's no way he'd convincingly ever go anywhere near an old abandoned well. After all, wells are deep, and dark, and slimy, and scary. All in all, he'd rather do just about anything else than to be anywhere near a deep, dark, slimy, scary old well. There was just one problem. He could smell gems. Not just any gems, but baby blue point diamonds. The rarest and most delicious of all gems. He'd only be fortunate enough to eat one baby blue point diamond in his entire life. He would never forget the flavor. Delicate, yet rich. Piquant, with just a hint of spicy sweetness. And the aroma. It was like nothing else in the world. It was heavenly. Tantalizing. There were baby blue point diamonds in the old abandoned well. Common sense told him that breaking into the old abandoned well to go gem hunting was insane. Suicidal even. Common sense told him to get Twilight or Rarity to come and help him liberate the sweet, sweet treasures. But Rarity would want them to be in her boutique, and Twilight was too busy reading her shiny new copy of The Awkward Teenage Pegasus Guide to Wing Boners given to her by Rainbow Dash after one many incidents with her new wings. And Spike really wanted those diamonds. The sooner the better. As the hungry little dragon contemplated his dilemma, a voice crashed through his thoughts like a rampaging bull wrecking a china shop. Finally, the great and powerful Trixie has returned to Ponyville! Spike groaned. Ah, oh, man, not her again. Spike grimaced as the infamous showmare trotted impartially over to him. You there, Trixie bellowed. You are Twilight Sparkle's pet lizard, aren't you? Spike gave her a flat, deadly glare. I'm a dragon, and I'm not her pet. I'm her number one most valuable assistant. Yes, of course you are, and that's adorable. Trixie said to me firstly. Make yourself useful and take Trixie to Twilight Sparkle. Take yourself. I'm busy, Spike grumbled. Trixie raised an eyebrow. You do not appear to Trixie to be busy. To Trixie, it appears that you are merely standing by an old abandoned well. Yeah, well I'd rather stand by this old well all day than spend five minutes leading you anywhere. Besides, why do you even need a guide? You know where the library is. The great and powerful Trixie has forgotten, Trixie said simply. Spike rolled his eyes. So go and ask for directions. Trixie sat down on the ground beside him. Trixie knows you live with Twilight Sparkle, she said. Trixie believes that you'll likely go home eventually, probably before dark. That, or Twilight Sparkle will come looking for you. Therefore, Twilight will sit here and wait. When you go home, Trixie will follow you. Spike stared at her with half lidded eyes. Seriously? The great and powerful Trixie is always serious! Spike sighed. Well, this certainly should... Hold on a second. Spike studied Trixie, peering at her horn. Her incompetent, mind-bogglingly worthless horn, incapable of performing even a fraction of the magnificent magical feats Twilight Sparkle was capable of. But she was still a unicorn, 
and even the most insane unicorns could do at least one spell, right? And it was just so happened to be exactly the spell he needed. But could he really trust such an important mission to the pathetic and useless Trixie? After five full minutes of silent indecision, Spike realized that he didn't have a choice. He cleared his throat. Alright, I'll take you to see Twilight. If you help me with something very important. Trixie tilted her head curiously at him. And what is this important task you would have Trixie perform? Do you wish to rival Dragon Slain? Are you seeking a valuable artifact? Has Twilight Sparkle entrusted you the fate of Equestria in your own tiny paws? She stood up trotting in a circle around him, head racing improvisedly. There is no task so great that is beyond the mythical might of the great and powerful Trixie! I just need you to dig up some diamonds from the bottom of this well, Spike said. Trixie's eyes lit up. Diamonds? Yeah, you don't get the diamonds. Trixie threw back her head and sniffed indignantly. As if Trixie is motivated by such base greed, Spike sighed. You can have one diamond if there is enough down there to share. Very well, the showmare said. Trixie agrees to your terms. She tilted her head. But how can you be so certain that there are even diamonds in this well? I can smell them, Spike said, a bit of drool escaping its lips as his mouth watered. Trixie raised an eyebrow at him. You are very strange, she informed the young dragon. Coming from you, that's a compliment, Spike replied. So, uh... The sooner we get these diamonds, the sooner you'll get the Pester Twilight. With an indignant sniff, Trixie seized the ancient well cover in her magic and lifted it, revealing a circle of ancient smooth stones surrounding a deep pitch black hole. The old rotten wood disintegrated into a pile of moldy splinters as she lowered it to the ground. Do you suppose we will get into trouble for that? Spike shrugged. Not if we're out of here before any pony notices. He trotted up to the well and hopped into the edge, peering down. He inhaled deeply, and his eyes glimmered. Oh yeah, they're down here all right. They smell so delicious. Trixie blinked. Delicious? She raised a hoof. You're... you're going to eat them? Spike hopped back onto the ground. Well, yeah, he said. I'm a dragon. I love eating jewels. Trixie shook her head. Such a waste. So, are you gonna help or what? Trixie didn't know you planned to eat the diamonds, Trixie said. With a sigh, she added. But, as they say, a deal's a deal, she frowned. So, exactly how do you propose we find these diamonds at the bottom of this pitch-black well? Spike scratched his chin. Oh, yeah. I don't guess you can levitate something if you don't know exactly where it is, huh? Looking past Trixie, she spotted her travel wagon. Hey, do you still have that rope trick? Trixie does not perform mere tricks, young reptile. Trixie proclaimed. The great and powerful Trixie is the master of magical feats, yes or no? Yes. Yes, Trixie does. Spike nodded. How about lowering me into the well on a rope? Then I can dig up the diamonds and you can bring them back up. Trixie frowned thoughtfully. Yes, Trixie supposes that would work. A few minutes later, Spike was slowly descending into the depths of the pitch-dark well, clutching tightly to the rope, weathered in a pale pinkish-gray glow. As soon as his feet touched the cold, slimy muck at the bottom of the well, he let go of the rope. Okay, do the light spell now, he called. A wobbly blob of light dripped from Trixie's horn, 
and floated down the well, coming to a stop just above Spike's head. The dragon looked down at the ugly, greenish-black mud at his feet, and to his horror discovered that it was speckled with bright, shiny flecks of powder-blue crystalline dust. Oh no, he said, eyes filling with tears. What is it? What's wrong? asked Trixie. Ignoring her, Spike began digging through the mud, through blobs of crystal flecker gunk every each way. No, 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 no! he cried. After a few minutes of frantic digging, he barely flopped onto the slime, dejected. There aren't any diamonds down here, he complained. Just diamond dust in the mud! In that case, hurry and come on from there so I can fulfill the end of your bargain, Trixie said impersonally. Yeah, yeah, Spike sighed. I'm coming. As Trixie waited patiently for Spike to climb the rope, a fluffy white bunny rabbit hopped by. It noticed her, stopped, and hopped over to peer up at her. Trixie noticed the rabbit and raised an eyebrow at it. Yes? The rabbit pointed out the pile of debris that was used to be the well cover and tapped her foot, frowning. It is not as if Trixie had destroyed anything important. The rabbit hopped away. Trixie shook her head. Every creature in this town is obviously critical of Trixie. She snorted in irritation. Climb faster, minion of twilight! Trixie wishes to depart for more pleasing matters. Then maybe you can hold up the rope? Spike retorted archly. Oh, yes, of course. Trixie began raising the rope with her magic. Without thinking, she placed her front herbs on the lip of the well and peered down into its depths to better guide the dragon's ascent. The rabbit returned, wielding a water pistol. It positioned itself behind the unicorn, carefully took aim, and unleashed a freezing blast of water at very tender professional part of Trixie's anatomy. Yay! Trixie yelled, pupil shrinking in pinpricks. Her concentration shattered, the rope bearing the baby dragon plummeted into the well, followed seconds later by Trixie herself, who had unthinkingly jolted forward after being squirted. Her hooves slid down from under her and plunged face first into the well, legs scrambling and skidding all along the slick walls of the well, to no avail. For his part, Spike looked up to see the light far above rapidly disappeared ellipsed by a falling, flailing pony. Ah, oh, man, he moaned. He quickly hugged the wall of the well, praying Trixie's great and powerful plot was not about to squash him. The well was not especially wide. For Spike, it had been easy enough to scramble around in the mud at the bottom. It's not particularly spacious. Even a little fall would at least be able to stand and pace around in a circle for all the good it would do. A full-grown mare, however, would be forced to convert her body to a ridiculous degree of even standing on all fours in the bottom of the well. So it was that when Trixie landed, splattering cold slimy mud everywhere, she was forced to sit down on her hunches, scrunched up against one side of the wall, muzzled to snout with Spike, who suddenly found he had absolutely no room to move around at all. The great and powerful Trixie has an ouchie. Well, this is fun, Spike muttered. Your breath stinks of sulfur, Trixie complained. Well, yeah, I'm a dragon. We breathe fire. <laughs> Trixie attempted to turn away in a huff, but realized she lacked the proper elbow room to display significant annoyance. This is quite the mess you've gotten us into. Spike rolled his eyes. No one asked you to jump down the well! He looked up at the dark, smooth walls of the well. So... Any idea how we're gonna get out of here? Of course Trixie has ideas! Trixie is full of ideas! Trixie has so many ideas! Trixie's head is... So, in other words... No, Spike interrupted. He fished around at their feet in the mud and brought out the rope. 
it slurped and it surfaced. Spike grimaced. Well, the rope's no good. Even if we can hanker it up to where your magic is, it'd be just too slimy to hold on to. We can build a ladder! Trixie proclaimed triumphantly. Out of what? Spike asked. Trixie shifted. Um... Trixie had no thought of that. Couldn't you just teleport us out? Spike asked. Trixie glared at him. Teleportation, my ignorant little friend, is an extremely complicated and precise affair. One does not simply teleport at a whim. It takes enormous focus to channel the required energies. It takes dozens of calculations to take the ability to picture one's intended destination with pinpoint precision. Only the greatest unicorns may even attempt such a dangerous and powerful magic, and then only in times of most desire need. Not even Trixie dares to meddle with such unstable spells. Twilight Sparkle teleports downstairs for breakfast every morning, Spike says. And sometimes she teleports around the library just because she's too lazy to walk. She teleports at least 15 times a day, for no good reason. Trixie's left height twitched. Yes, well... She seemed to be struggling for an appropriate response. At length, she belted out. Twilight Sparkle has cooties! Spike rolled his eyes. I don't suppose you can flow me out of the well so I can go get help? And have you leave Trixie here to die? I'd get help and come back for you. Honest. Trixie grimaced and looked away. It doesn't matter. Trixie is not skilled at long-distance levitation. Spike face clawed. Just what are you good for then? How impertinent! The great and powerful Trixie has many talents! Oh yeah? Like what? Spy challenged. Trixie paused. Well, Trixie knows many spells. And Trixie is very good at magical fireworks. And Trixie is a business mayor of non -pareil. And, and... She faltered. And Trixie is... Pretty! Spike rolled his eyes. Great! We can use your silky mane to save our lives. We wouldn't even be in this ridiculous situation if you haven't decided to just have a whole bunch of diamonds that which don't even exist! Trixie shouted, spraying flecks of spittle at Spike. Spike glared at her. Back off! Unless you want to see me breathe fire, he warned. He looked at the rope, which was still coated in a slimy mud that glittered with diamond dust. Hmm... The rope began to glow pink, and the mud slowed off it, revealing pristine hemp fibers. Trixie can at least do that. Well, that's something anyway, Spike said. But how can we use that to get us out? Trixie can only think of one other way for us to escape this well, Trixie said. Before Spike could ask, she inflated her lungs and screeched. Help! Spike covered his ears and winched. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna... Some pony save Trixie! There's no pony up there. Trixie is too great and powerful to die! Spike spat a tiny green fireball in Trixie's face, enough to get her attention without burning her. Are you done being a pain in the tail? he asked flatly. Trixie coughed, blinking dazedly at the little dragon. A tiny spot of soot mirrored her muzzle. That was uncalled for! Do you think you can levitate one end of the rope up to the top of the well and hold it steadily with your magic? Spike asked. Trixie frowned. Trixie will try. Grimacing, Trixie seized the rope in her magic and committed it to snake upwards. The top of the rope soon reached the lip of the well far enough. That's the best I can do. Great, just keep it steady. 
With a little effort, Spike was able to wriggle his way up the rope, using the slickness of the well to slide out of the uncomfortable proximity to Trixie. Spike started climbing in earnest, grunting with exhaustion. He was more than halfway to the top when the magical aura faded from the rope, and it and Spike fell back to the bottom of the well. He landed on Trixie's head, then slid down her back and landing directly on her flank. Ugh, he complained. Lucky for me, you're fat. What did you say? Trixie roared, looking back at him with unholy fires of feminine wrath in her eyes. Mm, mm, nothing, Spike squeaked. Trixie snorted indignantly. So, I suppose because of your incompetence and greed, we're doomed to die in here in this disgusting old well. No, we're going to get out of here, Spike said. He sighed. If I just had some parchment and a quill. Oh yes, I suppose a random pony would just happen past and read a note that says that we're trapped in a well, Trixie said archly. No, I can send a letter to Princess Celestia, Spike said. I send letters with my fire breath all the time. Trixie blinked. Seriously? Yeah, Spike said. I can probably even manage to send it to Twilight directly. Though I haven't actually tried that yet. Trixie frowned. Trixie could try to fetch parchment and a quill down here, but... She sighed. Ah, oh, who am I kidding? Trixie's magic can't reach that far. Are you sure? Spike asked. I seem to remember you shooting off some pretty impressive fireworks that one time. Trixie snorted. Fireworks are easy, she said. There's absolutely no effort involved in a basic pyrothenetic illusion. They have no mass. They're just showy flashes of light. Trixie's eyes lit up. That's it! That's how we're gonna get out of here! Trixie blinked. Say again? Your fireworks! Spike said enthusiastically. If you can just keep shooting fireworks up out the well, sooner or later some pony will come and investigate, and then we'll be saved! Trixie lifted her head, eyes alit. Yes. Yes! That could work! She struggled to her hooves heedless of the limited space, and the dragon, who suddenly found himself squashed between his rear end and the small wall of the well, and raised her horn proudly towards the fading light far above. Behold, small reptile, the great and powerful Trixie shall save us! Trixie's horn began to glow, and streams of brilliant sparkly fireworks shot up the well, exploding high above. Fifteen minutes passed, with Trixie struggling to keep up her pythotonetic performance. Just as Spike was certain Trixie would falter, a familiar rainbow mane peeked over the edge of the well. What the hay's going on down there? Rainbow Dash! Spike cried. You gotta save us! Spike? Rainbow asked, blinking. Who's us? Who's down there with you? She gasped. Oh my gosh, Twilight! Are you trapped down there too? If it was Twilight, we would have teleported out already, Spike pointed out. It's Trixie. Trixie tilted her head. Trixie? Yes, it is I, the great and powerful... Oh, forget it. Just get us out of here. A half hour later, Spike and Trixie were finally freed from the well around where a suitable crowd of ponies had gathered. There were cheers, jeers, and goodly amounts of laughter all around. Twilight rushed forward and seized Spike in a bone-crushing hug. Ah, oh, Spike! I'm so glad you're all right! She held him at arm's length and gave him a hard stare. What were you thinking? Playing around in an old abandoned well? And you, she said turning her royal glare at Trixie. What on earth preceded you to endanger a helpless, innocent baby dragon? Chill Twilight, Spike said. It's totally my fault. 
He turned to Trixie, had bowed. Look, I... I saw how I got you into this stupid mess. He paused. And I'm sorry I called you fat. Trixie gave him a long measuring stare. Apology accepted, she said. And I'm sorry I didn't find your diamonds. She then did a double take on Twilight. Twilight Sparkle? Since when did you have wings? <laughs>